and welcome back to Lair. I'm Sulk and here to bring you our next build video. Today we'll be doing another addition to our Crash City, Chinatown edition. And according to Google Translate, this is a Lucky Silver House. I have no idea what a Lucky Silver House is, but here I am going to build it. Please tell me in the comments what this is and the significance of this building because I sure as hell don't know. Please. This is once again made by Panelist Bricks. Kit number 610012 with 2,551 pieces rated for 6 plus. Once again, it's going into our Chinatown and just looking closely at it from the uh, front of it. First thing that really pops out is lots of flowers. And on the second floor here is actually made by the brick, actual brick tiles. With, well, they're all brick tiles, okay, fine. But these are the tiles that actually specifically have brick marks engraved in them. So what I've been noticing on every single one of these buildings I've built so far, the second floor is always just slightly a bit different in how it is designed and put together. But, can't wait to get started, and let's get into it. Starting things off, we have the box here. Once again, made by Panos Bricks. Lucky Silver House. Please tell me what this means. I'm just asking people right now. And we have... Pretty much a full image of the building that I'm going to build. And once again, part of uh, different uh, seven different uh, kits that make up a Chinatown. Looks like we have four regular minifigures and one dinky little one, I guess a child's one. So once again, at the bottom of the box, it shows the dimensions. So 27.5 centimeters by 27 centimeters, and it says about 24 centimeters tall. I'm assuming, once again, center mills plate. Back in the box. You see it's a modular building, so first, second, third floor. Looks like the roof is built a little bit different again from all the other ones I've done. So as I reiterate from the opening video, second floor and roof, each one seems to be just slightly bit different from the rest. And looking at all the little kind of stills in it, a sign that, once again, thank you Google Translate, Lucky Silver House, nice little balcony, looks like it has a parrot and some sort of instrument, a uh, jade urn, and looks like a lot of these little gold slash chromey pieces in here. I'm assuming silver. I did try to duplicate. But yeah, I, I honestly wish I knew what this was. Please don't fault me on that one. So let's crack it open. Once again, Padlow's Bricks, very nice sturdy books, and once again, full color. I love that about them. This has about 99 pages of instructions and 427 steps. Doesn't look too intricate, but famous last words, as I always say. And hopefully I could spend with, build this within the 4-5 to five hour mark. I will be replacing this base plate with our standard mills plates because it will be going into the rest of our city. But uh, yeah, it looks like two big bags with a bunch of mini bags in it, just like all the other ones. But again, if you watched all the previous videos or the last two ones, you can kind of see I'm starting to repeat myself. But it is all the same line and you can't really fault me on that one. But let's get started.
So here's a completed jewelry store in all its glory. We're going to take a quick look at the outside first, starting from the roof and the uh, second floor. So you can see it has a balcony outside of a little parrot and a guzheng, which is pretty much a Chinese string instrument that sits on the balcony here. On the side, this is something new, it actually has one of these old kind of prop rod type of window openings. First time seeing one of those. Yeah, they are pretty much a brick out layer, so that was actually a little bit different from the rest of the builds I've done so far. Here is pretty much your side entrance, and it has one of these little cloth banner openings. You would kind of assume for a jewelry store to have a lot more locked doors, but again, not my decision on that one. And then we have the other side, nothing really to show except for the two windows. And that takes us back around to the front. Looking down onto the main floor. So you have pretty much, oh my god, I should probably zoom in a little bit so you can take a look. You pretty much have a moon gate in the front underneath this little balcony area. And nice trees out front with kind of a, you see the kind of lanterns behind it. You have the other front door with the two guardian lions. If you look very closely, they're pretty much the same lion mirrored. So if you're kind of expecting the male and female lions, you'll be solely mistaken on that one. A little bit disappointing, but what can you do? It's pretty much a nice kind of sign here that you can see says that lucky so whatever that Google Translate was at the beginning. You have the side stairs that lead up to the second floor. And again around the back, nothing really to see. And moving back to the front, you can get more lanterns and take another close look at the moon gate there. So after removing the roof, we have the second floor here. So front and center, you have the jade urn here. I wouldn't suggest tilting it too much because the cap here doesn't actually stay on too well. The peg doesn't actually go all the way through and it kind of just fumbles around a bit when you kind of shake it up. On the other side here, you have the little shrine here to pray to well, whatever gods you have. Going on to this side here. You have a nice little seating here with uh, teacups, uh, bowls, and little things, or little kind of jars. Yeah, these are two little golden frogs here that kind of sit above the little prop rod window area. Here you have the door that leads out to the balcony, and they both kind of turn inward to get her open. And on this side here, you have a shelf with more golden knickknacks. Not too sure what they look like flowers, to be honest. I'm not too sure what they're supposed to represent. But that's what they are. You have a nice little shield here and two other, again, green and gold. I wish I knew what these were. And you have a nice little urn here with a gem at the top. And this is the side flap that leads out to the main stairway that you saw on the outside. Going on to the main floor. Close up of that. So once you remove the top of the balcony, here's a better look at the actual moon door inside which just goes all the way to the back. Closely, uh, uh, taking close-ups here, you have a bunch of these little rods. Again, I am very bad at this. I hope you forgive me for that one. These three... See, I like lightsabers. I'm going to be dead honest on that one. Just call me uncultured, call me whatever it is, but I'm going to call them like I see them. So these three rods here at the center, right in front of this little cashier booth, with the abacus and again you have the pen and the ink pot and a gold ingot there. Beside it you have a little shelf with a golden rooster on top of it. You got the doors to the side where those two lines sat outside. On the other side you have two of these little golden statues here that kind of watch out through the moon door and two shelves that pretty much hold these rings on top and they, they kind of repurpose these little brown sausages to make it look like archways. Not too sure what it represents, but again, call me uncultured. On the other side, you have another shelf that has those roses, and again, everything inside is gold. So it's really driving home the point that it is a jewelry shop. <laughs> so Lucky Silver House, as they called it in the Google Translate, not totally incorrect, but yeah. If I could read it under comprehension, or again, if I could read it understand it a little bit more, then I would be not having these problems.
So yeah, probably should have paid a little more attention in Chinese school, but hindsight is 2020. So that's pretty much how you put back the balcony. This actually slides in here in order to go in properly. And the roof, this is why I have it off, is held on by just these two little corner pieces here. One, two, and just slides into place. So no pegs or anything that really hold it together. Let's just take one close look at the front again. And that just wraps up the close-ups and let's go back to the rest of the review. And we're back. This kit took about a little bit over four hours to finally complete. And you know, it's just, first thing I want to say, it, just like the rest of the line, it went together very smoothly. I might be starting a little bit like a broken tele uh, broken record right now because it's well, kind of what happens, I'm assuming, when you build an entire line of these little Chinatown buildings all by the same manufacturer. The building process gets a little bit repetitive, but I'm still having fun doing it. And since it only took about four hours, I guess I get a lot more efficient at it, knowing how to just put together everything and that pretty much how the build style goes with this particular company. But yeah, let's just get into what my likes and dislikes about it. Honestly, first thing I gotta say is love the way it looks. I've said it about the entire line. I think I'm gonna continue on saying it for the rest of the line because they haven't really dropped the ball at any of these buildings so far. A lot of these little small nuances that they have for like Chinese architecture and, and like that type of thing, it's it's very like it's on the ball because even at the front of it has actual a moon gate here and again for Chinese architecture lessons it's what's supposed to represent prosperity wealth things like that and well again I kind of realized it mid build that it, yes it actually is a jewelry store so having a moon gate into a jewelry store is actually a very good idea because you want to kind of have everybody who walks in there feel well more generous you want like again, you just want all the good feng shui things to go through, and that's why you have a moon gate in front. Also, a little side door here, which would has the guardian lions. Um, and uh, another good thing about again Chinese, Chinese architecture and feng shui, these are actually lions that kind of guard the entrances to buildings. And normally you have a male lion, a female lion, but right now they're both the same, but just kind of mirrored. And again, if you're gonna do something like this, I guess you should. Do it properly so you have one the male lion holding the ball and the female lion holding the child but they're both the same thing but mirrored so just a little minor details here but again if you kind of you won't notice it until i actually mention it another good thing about this is that i was a little bit worried when i saw the building have these another outside patio like it did the bar and i just want to like just struggle with it but this actually got together because there's a lot less details in it but it still gets a point across having this little balcony here and it just went together very smoothly. But that's just this entire build. It just went together ridiculously easily. As you can tell by the time, it, four hours compared to my initial like five and a half to four and a half. So I'm technically reducing it by half an hour each time, but we'll see you for the next one. Those are pretty much my likes about it. My dislikes is, again, I'm starting to sound like a broken record because these I can't tell if it's dark brown, light brown when it comes to the, the drawings on the, on the instructions. And some of these are a little bit mismatched, but if I didn't mention it, I'm probably sure you would not never notice it. Especially if you're like looking for the building from afar. And yeah, it's one, like, one of those blink and you'll miss it kind of moments. But putting it together wise, minus that whole mixing up the browns, there's really nothing else I can really truly complain. It just got a little bit difficult for when I'm trying to put together all these little tiny inner details of the jewelry store. Now, it was kind of a little bit frustrating because they didn't actually do that great of a job of how to properly place all the little, like the jewelry items, all the shelving and everything. But just take a deep breath and you'll figure it out really quickly. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up what I truly think about this. My thoughts actually about going into Crash City is... Having a giant gaping hole in your front door in front of a jewelry store in the middle of a city. I don't know where we would place this, but if we place this facing the road, there better be a cop station very close to it because, again, jewelry store. No front door. You're kind of asking to be robbed at that point. Let's be honest on that one. 
you'll be stupid not to rob the place. But seeing how it fits in the rest of the city, I can't wait to put it all together as I keep repeating that. But this is the third building in the line. And I'm not too sure you as a viewer, how you like, I got, again, these are say I have to complete the rest of this so we can actually have fully populate our crash city with buildings. And that is one of the priorities that are going on. But if you do want to see me build something else, or like, again, you could just go through the older videos, but if you want to see different types of other builds, please leave a message in the comments and we'll see what we can accommodate. But I got to keep going through these. Once they stop getting a little bit more fun, you'll start noticing it probably when I start talking about it in my reviews a little bit more. That it just starts to just drag on. But as long as I'm enjoying it, I'm just going to keep powering through it and just get these rest in the city. But I think we have three more left and the main strip. But depending on how it fits, it just, again, just might be the three other buildings. But yeah, that just about takes care of everything. Again, if you like this kind of content, don't forget that like and subscribe button and hit that bell notification to keep up to date with all our videos. And please leave a comment in the videos because we love hearing from you. And also gives us a little bit more motivation to continue the series. Because honestly, your comments really again, mean so much to us that it just allows us to keep producing more content. Also, don't forget to follow us on all social medias. We have our Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok up and running. And don't forget to check out our website at conquestlayer.com. For any type of branded merch or even your own custom merch that you want to make. Or just give it a ch uh, check out because I think we do have some of the older kits on the video, uh, on the website. And again, miscellaneous merch. But until then, I'm Sulk and have fun, Billy, y'all. Laters.